This airbrush is the new Iwata Custom Micron Takumi. It's a side feed micron with a 0.18 millimeter nozzle and needle combo. I just received this airbrush a few days ago from a company that I ordered from based in California. I paid full price for this airbrush, so I wanted to give a quick review of it to see how it compares to other airbrushes for potential buyers. So the airbrush comes packaged nicely in this aluminum box, which is wrapped in a microfiber cloth with the Iwata logo on it. Inside the box is the airbrush, a 7 milliliter paint cup, a small tube of Iwata Super Lube, a wrench for removing the nozzle, and a moisture trap. If we look at the airbrush up close, we can see it has a nice chrome finish to it, and it has the same high quality of any other Iwata airbrush. I've been using them for years, and I really love them. I'm a big fan of this square trigger. It's very comfortable to use, and it's extremely responsive, just like my other custom Micron. The interesting thing about this airbrush is that it's a side feed, so it has this little plug that could switch to either side, and you place the paint cup on the opposite side of it. That way it doesn't block your view if you're a righty or a lefty. You have a clear view straight to your picture. So since I'm a righty, I put the plug on the left side, and then I place the cup on the right side. What's interesting about this airbrush is, although it's technically a side feed, the paint cup is gravity assisted. The plug is at the very bottom. With the other side feed airbrushes, the cup has to pull the paint up from the bottom of it using the Venturi effect. So this way gravity helps it uh, be a little bit more responsive and a little bit quicker uh, on the trigger when you pull it. Also inside the box are some business cards of one of the technicians who test the airbrush here in the United States. I believe they're based in Portland, Oregon. Also inside the box is a manual along with a sticker and a test spray pattern. The test pattern shows the high level of detail you can get with this airbrush. The manual is pretty basic and straightforward. It goes in some tips and tricks how to use the airbrush, how to troubleshoot it, and at the end here is the included 5 year warranty which you get if you purchase it here in the US. The first thing I do to disassemble it is remove the handle from the back, then release the chucking nut to remove the needle. The crown cap on the front can be removed and placed on the back of the handle so that you don't lose it. Once you remove the spring guide from the back, the whole spring assembly comes out in one piece. Here I can remove the needle chucking nut, which allows me to remove the needle chucking guide and the spring. And the last part on the back here is the needle spring adjuster, where you could adjust the tension of the trigger if you want it tighter or looser. From personal experience, I don't recommend removing the nozzle on a Micron. I've done it plenty of times with my old one and also broke it plenty of times. Just try to keep it as clean as you can and you really won't have to worry about removing it too much. In this gap underneath the trigger is the air piston, so be careful not to lose that when you disassemble this. The airbrush trigger has a guide at the bottom of it, so to place it back in the body, you have to put it in an angle and then rotate it into place. The mechanisms in the back of this airbrush seem to be built exactly the same as all the other version 2 airbrushes, which came out about 5 or 6 years ago. The back of the handle has a needle stop, which I never use, and also you can place the crown cap on the back here so that you don't lose it. If we compare this airbrush to the custom Micron CMB, we can see that the two are very similar. The main difference, obviously, the cups and the trigger is slightly closer on the new side feed. A similar brush, which is half the price, is the GSI Krios. Um, you can get this for about $220, and it's an amazing airbrush. Works very similar to the Microns. The main difference is that the GSI has a larger gravity feed cup and has a MAC valve at the bottom for controlling air pressure. Another option at half the price is the Harder and Steambeck Infinity. This is a great airbrush. I have a few problems with it, but I'll talk about that in another video. And at a fraction of the cost of the Micron is the Badger Sotar 2020, which is one of my favorite airbrushes of all time. You could pick up the Sotar for around $100. For the price, it's one of the best airbrushes you can get. The trigger is extremely responsive. It sprays slightly different than the Micron, but it's still an amazing airbrush, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a detailed airbrush. So in testing out some of the spray patterns, I can see that this airbrush is very responsive and it sprays a nice clean line. The most important thing for a clean line though is a good paint and good paint reduction, especially for a small brush that's a 0.2 millimeter or smaller. It has a nice small spray pattern and does a great job at atomizing the paint. One thing I like about the Micron is that it seems to use less air even if you're spraying at the same PSI as other airbrushes. So what's nice about it is you don't have to be so close to your work to get small lines. You could stay back um, a little bit farther than you can with other airbrushes and still get a nice transition from dark to light. As you can see in this painting, the sphere is very smooth, so the airbrush did a great job at atomizing the paint. 
In the next tutorial, we're going to be working on an advanced portrait. So I've been using this airbrush for the first part, which is the hair. And so far, I really like it. I feel like I have a lot of control. I could put the values where I need to, especially in small areas where I want a very thin shadow underneath hair. This airbrush seems to be doing a great job. It's very similar to my old Micron, which is a CMB. So I'll have to use this for a few more months to see how well it performs. But so far, I'm very happy with it. Now I usually don't paint small paintings, but since this is a micron review, I wanted to try painting a very tiny skull to see how much detail and control I'm able to get from this airbrush. I didn't use any sort of shields or masks for this small painting. Um, I did it very quickly in a few minutes and I did it completely freehand to see the amount of control that I can get with this. So I wanted to compare this to my other Micron, which is a CMB, and it performs about the same. I mean, the spray pattern is very similar, and you can get a lot of detail on this. This is a tiny little painting to try to get in all the shadows and highlights, but it did a fine job, and I'm, I'm definitely happy with it. Here's my finger for reference. You can see that this is even smaller than my finger now, so I have no complaints with this airbrush so far. So that's it for this review. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them down below in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.